Hey, greetings everybody, GleeCon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft coming at you. We are um, jumping forward before I had said that we were going to jump forward maybe a couple thousand years or a thousand years is what they had said. Um, but it appears we're only going forward maybe a hundred and something. I left it over there. Um, I want to say it was like 2680, 2670, somewhere around there where... Uh, before the dark portal so stay a while and listen to this one we're now 2500 years before the dark portal but maybe we didn't jump forward as far because now we're moving to another race an important one but this is iron forge and the awakening of the dwarves this is 2500 years before the dark portal um, we do know that in warcraft 2 the gnomes and dwarves are also part of the alliance um, as well as the high elves um, as far as the orcs go, we'll talk about that as we as we delve into Draenor, but um, there are trolls, which we've mentioned. Okay, Ironforge and the Awakening of the Dwarves. Far to the south of Dalaran, the ancient vault of Uldaman lay darkened and silent. And this is that uh, over that Thandal span, the second half of the Eastern Kingdoms, which we haven't talked about yet. Ages ago, Irania and Keeper Arcadis had gone into hibernation, Many of the mechanomes who had once watched over Uldaman's machineries had departed as well after being afflicted by the curse of flesh, but a handful of these faithful clockwork servants had remained. Their once resilient forms gradually succumbed to the degradations of time. They broke down and died out until only one was left. Only one mechanome. Although this lone mechanome did her best to maintain Uldaman, much of the stronghold fell into disrepair. Soon, the curse of flesh began to chip away at her metallic form. The affliction eventually transformed her into a gnome, and she grew old and close to death. Aware that she did not have much time left, the gnome worked to free the earthen hibernating deep within Uldaman. She could not bear the thought that when she passed, they would be abandoned forever in the vaults dead and halls. Oh, that's a little bit of a sweet story. But how did um, how did any mecha gnomes then survive? That's another question. Maybe there are more that are not in Uldaman. That, that must be it. With her dying breath, the gnome activated the earthen's hibernation chambers. The chambers stirred to life. The titan forged slumbering within awoke to a new world and a new destiny. These awakened earthen discovered that they had changed dramatically. The curse of flesh had taken its toll, transforming them into creatures of flesh and blood. Creatures who would call themselves dwarves. No explanation, that's just what we call ourselves. Still groggy from their years of slumber, the dwarves stumbled from the broken halls of Uldaman and emerged onto the surface of the world. They found themselves drawn to the west, where a range of majestic stone mountains towered into the clouds. Much like the gnomes who had left Uldaman centuries ago, the dwarves were forced to contend with the savage beasts that prowled the land. Yet whereas the gnomes had used their ingenuity to overcome these threats, the dwarves relied on their resilience and natural physical strength. Eventually, they reached the mountains they had seen on the western horizon, and they settled into the snowy region of Dun Morog. Although the curse of flesh had diminished their memories, the dwarves still held faint ties to their titan-forged heritage. Inspired by these recollections of the past, they named their new home Cosmodon, or Mountain of Kaz. In honor of the titan shaper, Kaz Goroth. The dwarves retained a natural affinity to stoneworking and mining as well. They delved into the heart of Cosmodon's tallest mountain and crafted an immense forge. Around it, the dwarves built a proud city called Iron Forge. This would become the seat of their new home, a great and mighty nation that would stretch deep under the mountains. It's the dwarven capital in World of Warcraft, but I think Cosmodon is more what is referred to in the earlier games. As the dwarves set out to mine Cosmodon's mountains and explain, expand their holdings, they discovered the gnomes dwelling in nearby caverns. The people of Ironforge were enthralled by the ingenuity and techno savvy of their diminutive neighbors. The dwarves also sensed a natural kinship with the gnomes, due in large part to their shared Titanforged ancestry, which explains why they essentially have a joint starting region um, in uh, World of Warcraft. They're the two that are combined in... in uh, the horde side it's the orcs and the trolls the dwarves imparted their knowledge of stone working and construction to the gnomes helping them lay the foundations of a wondrous city that would later be called gnomeregan 
In turn, the gnomes taught the dwarves engineering and science, introducing much-needed efficiency and advancements to Ironforge. Although the gnomes and dwarves would largely keep to themselves in the centuries that followed, they had formed an unbreakable bond and would aid each other in times of need. Okay, so we've established Ironforge, the dwarven capital. Um, basically, that entire dwarven culture. They, they in turn, help the gnomes start their base, Gnomergon. Um, so we have... They don't really have a separate capital, Nomergon, um, in multiple different ways has issues, so it doesn't exist as a capital, and, and, and we'll explain that later. Um, and uh, we've also established uh, their shared starting region and their um, the reason why they have such an alliance and affinity for one another. Okay, uh, another episode in the pipes. Five by five, I thank you, as always, for listening. And I'll see you next time on another episode of Lore of Warcraft.